The Bay of Quinte, just west of Kingston, Ontario, is a picturesque riding, one that many retirees are flocking to, and this is the reason why. Prince Edward County, with its breathtaking views, artisanal cheese and fine wine, as tourists take time to enjoy and indulge, it's a feverish pace for others. In these final hours of the federal election campaign, local candidates are running faster than ever. Nice to see you. Monday, the election's coming. For conservative Jody Jenkins, it means making every conversation count. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, so uh, are you planning on voting on Monday? I am. Excellent. And the Belleville City Councillor is also a local radio personality. Yeah, yeah, how's it going? Good. Hi, how's it going? Good. Creator of the Golf Guy radio show, now hoping to stay atop this game. Is there a comparison between golf and politics? Well, I, I think that the, I, I, don't, I mean, golf is an individual sport. Uh, this is a team sport. Um, it, certainly, uh, it certainly matters who you surround yourself with in these campaigns, and it also matters about uh, who you have on the, uh, the final team when we, when we arrive in Ottawa. For Liberal Neil Ellis, it's all about connecting with as many in the community as possible. Federal elections on Monday. Don't know if you voted yet or not. Uh, get out. I go to St. Paul's. Okay, get out and vote, and uh, counting on your support. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care. Yeah, go Jays, go man. Ellis is a former mayor of Belleville, running against not one but two former city councillors in the area. So how's the, the race been going so far for you? It's been a long one, so it's, yeah. but it's been fantastic. The reception at the doors and, and the public have, have been great, and uh, the, the, the momentum's here. There have been a few colorful stories um, with goings-on in the riding with how this race has been developing. Can you share some of those with us? Um, it's, it's been one of those cases where you have two candidates. You have Neil Ellis and Jody Jenkins to start off with, who have had a kind of a divisive relationship from they were on council. They've always had arguments about different issues uh, while Jody was a councillor and, and Neil Ellis was a mayor. They never really got along. And I think a little bit of that kind of drift over into the federal race. And I think the interest in the race kind of heightened once it was known that Neil Ellis and Jody were going to be involved. I think people kind of like that conflict when it pertains to federal politics. Uh, uh, Cassidy threw another mix into it as a Quinty West individual when the writings were changed because here you have two individuals that are pretty much from Belleville, Neil and Jody, uh, kind of going up against the guy who's from the other city, the neighboring city. The NDP's Terry Cassidy is a longtime city councillor and for him it's all about ensuring supporters get out and vote. We're fixing our, uh, clawing back our military yes, pension. you got it. You got it. Yes. I would love that. that that's what we, that's what, exactly what we want to do. So if I'm there and it's not happening fast enough, you make sure you call me and let me know about it because it's got to happen soon. There's yes, no reason it, it should be sitting around. Also in the mix, independent candidate Truman Tuck. He's running as a Judeo-Christian crusader for citizen rights. For the layperson who would meet you for the first time and say, what do you stand for? Mm -hmm. Why should I vote for you? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do in terms of changing government upside down? You would say what? I would say that we as citizens own the government. The government does not own us. And most of us, whether it's to do with income tax, property taxes, or regulatory bylaw issues, when we end up face to face in a conflict with a government person, we get the distinctive feeling they think they own us, where the reverse is true. So how do we fix that? We fix it by proportionate representation, by recall, by direct citizen veto, by giving us a whole tool chest as citizens that we are the citizen rulers of this country. In this newly created riding of Bay of Quinty, there is no incumbent, but the wider area was previously represented by two conservatives. The riding's new boundaries include both the rural area of Prince Edward County as well as the city of Belleville. Most here are middle class with an average family income of $82,000 a year. As for how they might vote... I've done well with the conservatives and liberals get in, they just overspend and then you got to play catch up and increases start and that's what I find. But I mean, I'm not an expert by any means. I just okay. follow my business and it seems to do better when they're in... I'm definitely voting liberal. For sure, uh, without a question. I think it's time for a change. I think that the Liberals have a vision of Canada that I really believe in. It uh, gives me hope. It makes me think about the future. It makes me have some hope for the future of my children. It makes me think about um, Canada as a nation that helps. And so that's my decision. 
20% of the residents here are seniors. And with the Canadian Forces Base Trenton nearby, even those who aren't military likely have military ties. So what are the issues for you? Um, child care, that's my background. I'm really interested in child care. My husband is a former military person, so I'm interested in... Um, you know, how they're going to support the military in this area. So those are a couple of key issues for me. And I am aging, so, you know, I want to see what they're going to do in the area for seniors also. So, How much a factor is that military community? It is critical. It is critical. I mean, we are, uh, and, and this community definitely prides itself throughout the region, the Quinty region prides itself in being a strong military community. I think the number was over 5,500 military men and women, veterans that are here, and uh, that, that group continues to grow. Uh, many of these people who come here and work here normally or sometimes end up retiring and making families here as well. Uh, so we're very rooted with the military, and the parties have shown that. They've shown their campaigns, spe specifically the Liberals, have come here targeting the Liberals. Uh, Trudeau was here a few weeks back. Yeah, what uh, was that like? Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, there are people, I will say, uh, from my observation, there were people from other party lines were, that were there just to see him. And they admittedly said that he's a Trudeau and there's some level of celebrity to him. And the Liberal leader did not arrive empty-handed. The Liberals are promising to inject $300 million a year for expanded military support programs, including reinstating lifelong pensions for injured veterans and reopening closed Veterans Affairs offices. That announcement was made here, so that, that was huge. Uh, when you look at, uh, we have a, a great uh, military uh, member that came down and spoke in Trenton last week, uh, was retired uh, uh, General Leslie came and spoke to the community in, in a well-known uh, well known and recognized military. Um, you know, myself, I've been intertwined with the base, obviously, being in this area also. So we've built relationships personally, and I think when you look at uh, the military in general, the cuts that have, have come in the last and money that has not been spent and, and given back. I think well, the Conservatives been, would say they've invested more, particularly in trend, well, trend when base. You go to, uh, JTF2 yeah. seemed to relocate as well, yeah. all part of it. But when you go back to gross domestic product, uh, they haven't. Stephen Harper also paid a visit to the riding, claiming Conservatives have increased veterans' funding by 35 percent. The NDP, meantime, is more focused on the military's role. The NDP is advocating uh, a withdrawal of active engagement, right? Uh, Absolutely. Why and how does that resonate, given this is very much a military community? Is that not going to draw the ire or anger of some here? Well, um, I know a lot of people that are military, current military people. In fact, they've got an older son who's planning to join the military and a grandson who wants to join the military. None of them are really excited about being in the military or joining it for the sake of going over to kill anybody or to be killed in a combat zone where it's not sanctioned by the UN, where in fact it's not showing any results that actually settle any disputes anywhere. So our position, the NDP position, is, is a great position. It goes back to the history of what Canada is about making peace, being peacekeepers, a very tough job to do, but one that we've done well. It's going to be an interesting race here. I think, I think people are very uh, amped up about what will happen. It's, it, and, and on the national stage as well, where you see that this is going to be a critical election for Canada over the next four years in terms of our economy, growth, in terms of where we go with infrastructure, health care, and all these different issues, it's even more so intense on the local level because we have an hospital that is going through major restructuring at the moment, year-over-year -year cuts. We have, uh, as you can see, if you've been coming through, riding through Belleville, major infrastructure projects going on, of which the, the the, the local communities are lobbying the province and the feds for supports on that and, and monies haven't been coming quickly so you hear talk about that, you hear talk about uh, what local families need in terms of child care and different issues uh, the one thing that makes it even more uh, important at uh, this run is that we're sending a new candidate uh, this won't be Daryl Cramp who's been the incumbent here for several elections going uh, this will be a totally new candidate who will have to test their foot in Ottawa and so you have that on top of the fact that there needs to be some clarity on what these candidates can do for this new ride in, uh, in the next four years. Are you concerned about the Liberal momentum? Because if you, if you believe the latest polls, <laughs> and I know you shouldn't believe the polls, but you know, nevertheless, people look at it, and you can see the Liberal momentum picking up. Does that concern you? Do you think? Well, well, I think we know that polls don't vote. People do, right, obviously. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. We're continuing to knock on doors, and uh, the messaging that we're hearing from the doors is very encouraging. So we have lots of work to do. And uh, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to being elected on October 19th.
Jenkins says the issue that concerns most voters here is the rising cost of electricity, a provincial issue that lands at the feet of the Liberal Ontario Premier. But federally? Because for most people's jobs, the economy, I suppose hydro rates plays into that. So yeah, but and then what is sex, so following up that, it is its economy, it's the jobs, it's uh, making sure that, uh, that young people have an opportunity right here at home. And on that point, he says most people are happy with how the Conservatives have managed things. Uh, there's, a, there's a contrast in between what the Conservatives are offering and what the other two parties are offering. It's quite simple. We believe in that low-tax approach. We believe in growing the economy and creating more jobs. But over, over all that, we believe that, we, that you are best equipped to decide where you spend your money. So we want to put more money in your pocket. The other parties have been very clear. They want higher taxes. They want to take more of your money because they believe that they know what's best for your money. It's a very simple message. That's what we're hearing at the door. People, people don't want to do that. People don't want to give up more of their funds. It's, you know, if they're talking about the, the options between a liberal NDP government or a conservative government, I can tell you that the response we're hearing at the door is that people are comfortable with the direction our party's going and they want to have Stephen Harper at the helm. I'm really glad that um, I've met you yeah. and um, I'm going to vote for you. I, I'm just praying that Harper will get in. Yeah. With all the, why is there so much criticism against this man? He's been he's been running the gov government, running the country for uh, what eleven nine years, nine, nine years, years yeah. and he's been doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. And and well, why are they allowed to, to criticize him so much? Well, I think the, yeah, I know it's unfortunate. There's so much negativity, mm. but I, I you know, we're, we're our campaign's taking the positive road, and I want to let you know that that's encouraging to hear that because mm. we're hearing that a lot of the doors. Now, this part of rural Ontario's long been considered pretty safe conservative territory. But the demographics here have been changing, with more and more retirees moving to picturesque Prince Edward County from big cities like Toronto. Again, it's but governor, Jenkins says governor. he's not worried about any changing okay. demographic or those who challenge his own changing political views. Your political views have shifted because you used to be an NDP representative. Yeah, yeah. How did that happen? Well, as uh, you know, in my early 20s when I ran the first time in 2003, I've, I was attracted to their, their social aspect of, of how they want to help the most vulnerable. And, and that's, kind of, that's kind of, it's still with me today. I mean, I have a heart for those that are down and out, that, have, that are facing, facing troubles and, and, and are looking for solutions. And I mean, I, I look at some of my choices uh, outside of my broadcasting career and, and what I've spent my time doing, whether it's an in-school mentor with Big Brothers, whether it's working with troubled youth in, in Prince Edward County at, a, at a, an organization called The Rock. Well, you know, at one time I was administering the warm line for Canadian mental health, and that was a phone line where people with mental issues and illnesses would call in, and that was, their, that was the only connection they had. That was the relationship they had, and sometimes it was the difference between, you know, some people would call in there that wanted to commit suicide. We were a warm, friendly voice that was there for them and, and would assist them. Um, those types of things are still with me. And I, I ran a men's homeless shelter. But I also understand, and that's where the transition in my life has come from, having our first child, getting married, having our first mortgage, that in order to make these types of programs achievable and sustainable, we have to have our financial side of the ledger in order. Selling stability over change has certainly been the focus for Stephen Harper in these final days of the election campaign. And for those who might challenge the Conservatives on the economy... We've been very clear in investing in our manufacturing sector. We have to have more opportunities there. I think at the end of the day, no government is perfect and we can always get better. What I'm looking forward to doing here in this region is building upon what we have seen. And again, the Innovation Centre is just one example. Uh, as we continue to make investments in our manufacturing centre, I know that we're going to see continued job growth there. And we also have to continue to invest in apprenticeships and the skilled trades. And we have an amazing college here, a Loyalist College. I know that obviously with the province and what they're doing. But, uh, you know, is there opportunities to make things, uh, enhance things and make them more more robust there may well be people actually when they're talking about the economy and jobs are quite comfortable and confident in the direction that our government is going what do they um, say can they say things like well they admire the leadership they believe that Stephen Harper is the, is the choice um, I can tell you that an overarching message that we hear at the door quite often is that people just don't have the confidence in Justin Trudeau to get it done but the local liberal candidate here believes his leader will get it done Buoyed by the late Liberal surge in the polls, Justin Trudeau has been suggesting the Conservative Party has lost its way. Mr. Trudeau's pitch of late has been, we're the party that's most progressive. Well, Is he appealing to those disenchanted Conservatives by well, saying that? Well, I think that, that's, or? you know, in, in, uh, if you read in the media again, and uh, I think we're a party that would, uh, you know, 
attract blue liberals and, and attract the uh, the red Tories, so to say. And is that going to happen here in this round? Well, I think there's uh, a lot of those that are helping us that uh, have come on board, whether it's uh, financially knocking on doors or making phone calls. We've got a great crew, and we've got uh, we've got a great help. So I think uh, our momentum's here, and it's just a matter of getting until Monday. Nice to see you. Uh, I don't know if you've got any questions on the federal election, any issues that are coming. Uh, we need your support. Hopefully you can get out and support me on Monday. Uh, but is the issue here also jobs in the economy? Are you hearing a lot about that? Um, jobs, and we, we do have a lot of factories in that. Jobs have, uh, is, is one of the issues, but, um, you know, it's, it's in the top four or five, I, I believe, uh, you know, from our surveys, from our polling. Um, infrastructure and, and health care is, uh, is are, are the big issues. Health care, meaning, um, you know, rural Ontario has a, a lot of cuts in health care. It's been an ongoing thing for the last 10 years. Uh, this area in general is an aging population. We're probably in the top 10 in Ontario for aging people. Uh, aging people uh, need a plan and even when you look at our, our, our plan for uh, home care that, w that we announced, um, all that resonates with the people at the doors because we're here, we're, we're experiencing or we're feeling that at the doors or we're feeling that as, as a community. So when you take the planks and the platform, look at infrastructure, you look at home care, uh, you look at sitting down with the provinces and actually trying to work the Health Accord Act back out, um, these, are, these are key issues that affect rural ridings. Talking to the Conservative candidate here, one of your challengers, he says jobs and economy are still the number one issue, and he says in that vein the Conservatives have certainly delivered, and you can't make these other investments until you balance the books and you steer the economy correctly. Would you agree, disagree, or what's I, I your view on that? You know, and have the Conservatives yeah, done a good yeah, job? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, balancing the books. I mean, uh, they say they balanced the budget. Did they balance one, you know, all the transfers? And, and I don't want to go down that road. But when you, you look at this community in general, um, if you don't have health care, if you don't have people moving here and you have an aging population and you have a shrinkage of population, that's huge issues. And so when you look at the economy, uh, the economy in general hasn't been something that's been coming up the doors as, as, as much mm -hmm. as... But have the Conservatives done a good job? No, I don't think so at all. Why I do mean, you say that? Uh, when you look at the job losses in Ontario in general and you look at uh, the built out, uh, the economy's moved to an oil-generated economy. And when you looked at a high dollar and uh, the dollar was at a dollar, when I was mayor, when the dollar was down around 80, 90 cents, we had factories come in every two months, every three months, uh, looking to locate in this area and, and build out. When the dollar went to basically an oil dollar, factories stopped coming. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Mr. Harper based our economy on that. Well, that's now, just one part of the economy, they yeah. say, and that's external well, factors, global conditions that they can't... But it hurt Ontario. Prevent. And when you look at the manufacturing jobs, they left. Now spend this here where the dollar's coming down. In the last year, there's been good announcements. The factories are starting to come back. Factories and jobs are looking back. So we've had expansions of organizations like Procter & Gamble. Mm -hmm. uh, other industries have expanded. So we've had a, a lot of organic growth, and, and that's good. And when it comes to the Conservatives sowing fear over liberal deficits. I mean, isn't it risky to rack up deficits? That's... Uh, the when, you look at the, when you look at uh, deficits for infrastructure, uh, it creates jobs. It, it grows your economy. So whether it's uh, getting the 401 so people can get their product to market, uh, mm -hmm. you look at this this area in, in general. We're a big shipping company, uh, a big shipping. So uh, a lot of freight, a lot of uh, uh, food, uh, food oriented businesses here, and they rely on their product to get market on time. So when you look at the 401. Uh, Sunday night I was on the 401 and basically to, to go uh, a, a drive that should be half an hour was over an hour. So I mean that chokes our economy off. Border crossings, all these things have to be looked at and the Conservatives have ignored that. The NDP meantime is criticizing the Conservatives for spending too little as well while warning Liberals are going to spend too much. You've said that the Harper Conservatives have done, done damage to people in this riding. How so? Well, in many respects, uh, again, across the street from our office where we are right now, there's Veterans Affairs. And there are people here who have felt the fact that Veterans Affairs, in terms of the programs they put forward, are less than what they should be and less what they were. And when we look at the current budget, uh, the government was proud to say that they've got a surplus, and part of that was not spending the money in Veterans Affairs, not necessarily just here, but across Canada. So how does that really help people here? When we look at people here that are struggling with low income, there's no plan there to produce anything like PharmaCare, which helps people with a critical need when they're short of medications. And there's no plan here to deal with uh, a really affordable child care. Even though the Liberals promised it for 12 years, they didn't deliver anything. At one time, even Harper promised them child care. Hasn't delivered any of that. These are things that make a difference in people's lives if they want to have a job, they want to be able to cover their bills and pay for necessary things that they want. Going back to the military community here, I know that the NDP would reopen those closed uh, Veterans Affairs offices, mm -hmm. but the Liberals are vowing to do the same, and in fact, they've got a lot of money committed to veterans. 
Well, you know what? Um, I, I commented at one of the candidate meetings on how skilled and intelligent the Liberal candidate was because he could not only memorize his own platform but ours as well. And not only memorize it but choose to, to want to do some good things that we plan to do. No different than what Tommy Douglas did back in the 60s when we began Medicare in Canada. A, a premier from Saskatchewan who actually did the work to create it and get it and bring it to, to the federal government, to the Liberal government who then adopted that and also followed up with Canada Pension. But again, I'll just you yeah. know reiterate, the Liberals are promising everything and more that the NDP is when it comes to military families and veterans. There's They've got momentum, if you believe the latest polls. <laughs> Does that concern you, that it, the NDP may not be a choice Well, here? I guess what we want to talk to people about is real value and not just money spent, large amounts of money spent. Because if you look at promises that the Liberals made, I mean, I can recall not that long ago that, you know, there wasn't going to be a GST. And my God, there was. Uh, there was going to be balanced budgets, and yeah, there were, but nobody wanted to talk about the cuts to health care, which were done during the Liberal time frame. When you talk about uh, multi-billion dollar uh, deficits that they're planning to create, how much of that's going to actually be there and how much more is going to be there, and then how are they going to pay that back? 17 years of balanced budgets in Saskatchewan, that's never talked about very much, and across all governments, provincial and federal, over the history of Canada, the NDP has the best record for balanced budgets of any party in Canada. So we, we stand by that kind of way of looking at things. And when we look at the Liberal promises, they're pretty good at promising things with your money and our money. The question is, how are they really going to pay for it? And what kind of cuts are they going to institute in year four of their mandate? Their mandate? And at that point, you know, we've got to be wary of the fact that when somebody wants to vote so badly they'll pay anything for it, how genuine is that? And what are they really concerned about besides getting elected? But some are also questioning the NDP's motives in taking a more centrist approach this election, vowing to balance the books ahead of planned spending, and now the NDP cell is all about mathematics. The Liberals have got to gain 100 seats. We've got to gain 35. Now, how hard is it to gain 35 seats versus gain 100 seats? And I think that's the issue that we're putting forward there. Are people going to go for that kind of mathematical argument, that practical argument? It's, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, the biggest argument I think that we have as a party is that historically people have always considered Canada a two-party system. And in spite of the fact there's been numerous small parties over the years and we've been the dominant third party, it's never come to an election where there was a serious thought that a third party would ever win and become government. This is that year, this is that election where we have a chance to be that party, to change the two-party, you know, conservative or liberal, twiddly-dee, twiddly-dum, and get something different. The race here in Bay of Quinte has also seen some controversy, and it goes beyond just simple name-calling. The Conservative candidate here alleges hundreds of his election signs have gone missing. And Jody Jenkins is also missing something else. A board member of the local Conservative Riding Association resigned after some inappropriate posts were found on her Facebook page. Uh, she was actually, as, as people have said, a friend of uh, Jody Jenkins on Facebook. And it was found that she had made some pretty disparaging comments towards uh, racial groups, uh, um, uh, Syrian refugees, uh, well, primarily minorities. And uh, as, as soon as the complaint was made and it became public, uh, the director here, the association president, uh, Mr. Bond, decided that he was going to remove her uh, from the board. And uh, uh, the next day released information that's saying that she had resigned. Someone's stealing your election signs, though. Hundreds of your signs have gone missing. Yeah. What's going on with that? Well, I'm sure it's people that are concerned about our campaign. Competition? Uh, hard to say. I mean, you could be, you can chalk it up to a lot of things, vandals, young people, older people. Are you surprised that that's what it's come down to? Uh, no, because we, we, fully, we fully expected that people were going to. I've, I mean, I've never, I've never been someone to shy away from, from, a, from a good battle. I mean, my time on council was... My track record on council was that of a fighter. I stand up and I fight. I stand up and I'm vocal. So it's and part I'm of the fight. Continue to it could be, but again, we don't. Uh, we we're staying in our lane. I'm not. I'm not worried about what the. Uh, I'm not, I don't get too confused, concerned about what the other parties or what other individuals are doing. And it certainly wouldn't point the finger at uh, at the other parties. I'm just saying that uh, you know when you have a couple hundred signs go missing, it's kind of odd. 
uh, Jody Jenkins has complained. He's actually filed a police report, and the police were actually looking into that. He had lost, uh, he had said it in the hundreds uh, in terms of signs over a period of time. Uh, he was somewhat concerned about the, that trend and how it might impact him. And, and there was a little bit of myths going around of how that might have happened and, and who was behind that, but not much has happened. I haven't heard anything in terms of a police response. Who's behind this? Well, I think uh, I would look at, uh, I've ran, you know, again, three mayor's races, and we always lose signs. Uh, kids will be kids. Adults will be kids sometimes. Uh, I think some of them are probably in basements on walls and it's things like that. It's not political competitors? I, I don't see that. I, I, I believe good in most people. So, I mean, uh, to come out and say that somebody's stealing, I, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, I've seen that some of them have gone. I, I have no idea where they've went. I know a lot of mine have disappeared as well. And the liberal signs are multiplying like mushrooms. So uh, what I say is that the two bigger campaign teams, the liberals and conservatives, have got a lot more money for signs than we have. And proportionately, we probably lost as many as they have. But again, we started with fewer signs. And, and the real signs we're counting on are the signs we get at the doors and people are saying they want to change, they want to support us. And the big sign we're looking for is what happened this past weekend. We're all a huge turnout for the advanced polls. And the big sign we're looking for is what happens on the 19th. And that sign is an X beside Terry Cassie, the first in the ballot. The one thing all candidates want to steal now are votes. And with the clock ticking down to election day, the candidates know every hour, every word now counts more than ever. Truman Tuck is hoping for a minority government, saying a situation where parties are forced to work together is a good thing. The party politics in the last decade has become a wolf pack. And anybody who spends any amount of time in the halls of power in Ottawa, I describe it as a bunch of titanics run by psychopaths. They're playing bumper cars. Aren't there some good politicians who understand that they are voted into government and, and sent to Ottawa on behalf of all of us, the people? Aren't I've, there some people doing good? Well, I'm not saying that, that some of the, that the MPs don't do good. I'm saying that, that the, when they have controversial areas, that even the most senior level, at the cabinet le level and stuff, uh, they're not able to act on their own. They're not able to act with principle loyalty on their own values and principles. Everyone's whipped by their party. Absolutely. Yeah. And the whipping has become the worst under Harper. You know that Harper controls every committee contr and s has uh, monitors from the PLMO. You know, Harper literally became the emperor of Canada. But conservative candidate Jody Jenkins rejects any such suggestions. I know that the Prime Minister is very clear with his caucus that he wants to know everything, good, bad, or indifferent. So I, I have it on good authority from uh, individuals that uh, we are more than willing, or more than welcome, to bring forward ideas, but we better have our facts to back it up. And for candidates here, selling their ability to represent their riding fully is part of the pitch. Look at uh, our platform on government reform. Uh, there's going to be less whip votes. We're, if you look at the definition of MP, an MP is supposed to bring uh, their constituents views and values to Ottawa and Mr. Trudeau has said that over and over again that he wants his MPs to, to bring those issues and represent their riding. My point is that the government systems are broken. The citizen must have statutory rights for vetoes for bills. Uh, we should be able to introduce legislation independent of our MP. We should be able to fire them if they lie or change parties. We have to have real democracy tools. Have you decided how you're going to vote yet? Uh, not really. I'm still kind of undecided. Um, in this area, it's hard because I know the three candidates really well. I think they all can do a great job. I want to vote for the area and not necessarily for the party. I want to vote for the person who's going to do the best in this area. So, yeah, I may just wait until Monday when I go to, to the polls to do my final decision. In the Bay of Quinte for CPAC, I'm Jacqueline Mulcharek.